Let us get into the word of God this morning. Turn your Bibles with me to Mark chapter 4. We are here in this passage for a long time, but every time when we look into it, it is a blessing to learn the truth that God wants to speak to our life personally today and the situation that we are going through. Let me read it for you. It says in verse 26, And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and raise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. A beautiful passage which is talking about how God wants you to personally be blessed and grow in every part of your life. And you know, it is the desire of God that God wants you to have a better life. How many of you know that God wants you to have a better life? You know, choosing a life partner is important. Together living your life and turning your life to be a better one is much more greater blessing that God brings into our life. And to turn our life in a better way and to turn our life into the blessing of God, God has certain ways and methods how He wants to bring those blessings into your day-to-day -day life. For all of the blessing to you know, be accomplished in our life or in order to receive all of God's blessing, God always has a method. And those methods and ways are mentioned in the Bible as laws. The law of increase, the law of blessing. That's what we've been learning for a long time. And uh, as you just get better and better in understanding the methods and the way that God wants to bless your life, you will flourish in every part of the life. And one such law that we've been looking on for a long time is talking about how we got to be diligent in our work, how we got to be, you know, obedient in our work, in the Word of God, how we got to, you know, apply faith along to our diligence, along to the Word that we obey to the Word of God. One of the most essential part in our life is Christian life is faith. Trusting God is a very important thing for you to obey the word of God and to do your work very diligently. And that's why, you know, faith plays a major role. But we got to find out how is this faith playing a role in our life. Because faith involves in every aspect of our life. When I say faith, you know, we are uh, not eliminating the law of diligence or we're not just pushing out the law of obedience. When you work these three things together, you will see that God will help you to move forward in a better way. These three are very essential aspects for you to enjoy the blessings of God in your day-to-day -day living. And when we, you know, look into the aspect of faith, the Word of God clearly says, that faith is involved in your sowing and in your reaping. All of our life is governed by sowing and reaping. Today, whatever you receive, it's because you have sown something uh, yesterday or day before or in your uh, previous you know, days. You have sown something. Sowing principle works in every part of our life. So sowing and reaping is a vital aspect and for that vital aspect you got to understand diligence is important, obedience is important along with your diligence and obedience. Faith is very important for your sowing and reaping. The passage that I read you is showing you how a man is working in the kingdom of God. It is, it is mentioned a man who is working in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of God it is clearly picturing that, you know, the kingdom of God works through faith. You know, the reason why we say kingdom of God is because you and I are part of God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is in us. 
And, the, and if you understand how the kingdom is working, then you will always, you know, play the role of faith in your day-to-day -day living. And one of the aspects, is, it's, it's talking about sowing and reaping. As we read here, it says, the duty of a man is to sow. God has given us a responsibility and that responsibility, God is saying, your part is to sow your seed. The seed that you got to sow for your life, the seed that you got to sow for your family, the seed that you got to sow for your work, in your responsibility, in the society that God has placed you, in the church that God has placed you. God has always, you know, given us a responsibility, given us a seed to sow. That's the responsibility of a man. And God says, once you do your part, from there, God starts to do his part. And when God starts to work to do his part, what is he doing? He's trying to produce the rain. He's trying to produce the sunshine on the seed that you have sown. And you find, then you see the result of God in what you have sown. So first part is our part, that is sowing our seed. And the next part is God working on the seed that we have sown. And the third part is God is saying, there is a reaping time for you. And in that reaping time, God again uses you. Because you are the one, you know, who sowed that seed for your life, for that blessing, for that increase to come into your, into your family or into your personal life. Therefore, God is assuring you that you got to reap. Sowing is important. Same way, reaping is also important. If you concentrate on sowing, then you got to also concentrate on the part of reaping. Because, you know, that's where many people, we fail. We, we, we are good in sowing because, you know, uh, it, is, it is one of the, you know, aspect involved in everything that we do. We cannot stop, you know, sowing aspect in our life. But you can stop the reaping aspect. You can neglect the reaping aspect in your life. That's why God is trying to show you how important it is for you to reap. And when you reap, you got to understand diligence is also working in it. Obedience is also working in it. As well as faith is also working in the part of reaping. That's why I showed you, uh, you know, for several weeks uh, that you see many people are sowing much but when it is time for them to reap, they reap very little. Why couldn't people reap everything what they sow? There are so many reasons that I'm talking to you and I just I pointed out a few, few of the reasons uh, for, the, for the past couple of weeks and I showed you. The reason is because we sow sparingly. Sowing little is not a problem. But sowing with the wrong intention, with the wrong idea, you know, a man who doesn't have faith, he will not have a generous heart in sowing a seed. Now you understand how important the role of faith plays while sowing your seed. Then we showed you the reason why people don't reap everything is because they fail to sow their seed in the good ground. There is always a good ground that God wants you to sow your seed. And when we fail to sow that seed on the good ground, we cannot reap all of our harvest. And the third reason that I showed you why people aren't reaping is because there is no enough rain and enough sunshine in the seed that we have sown. Now you might, you know, have a doubt here, you know, we don't have the power to turn on the rain and turn on the sunshine. It is God who has to do that, you know. God is the one who pours down the rain. God is the one, you know, he makes the sun to shine on the seed that we have sown. It's God's part. But yet in that God's part, God is expecting your involvement. You can see that, you know, God is pointing out that your sowing is important for me to open up the windows of heaven and to pour down the blessing upon you. And in order to God to open up the windows of heaven, you know, one translation says, God will open the floodgates of heaven. In order to God to open the floodgates of heaven and pour out his blessing upon you, the word of God says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, 
we need to bring our tithes and offering, you know. That's the part where God is sowing. There is a part for you to sow your seed in faith. The act of faith is required. Not only, don't just limit in the part of just offering and tithe, but in every part of your life. And God says, if, if you obey to what I have placed over you, God says, you got to bring, you got to sow. And when you obey those things, you know, God is saying, I will open up windows. And you see so many blessings God gives in Deuteronomy 28. You know, it says in verse 11 particularly, it says, God will bless the work of your hand. God will make sure that you will have, you know, fruits in uh, your labor. And God says, I will open up the treasures of heaven. And God says, I will pour down rain from heaven. All of those blessings God is mentioning there because... You know, God is saying, when you bring your action of sowing with faith, God says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. And if you go down to read in that same chapter, verse 28 in Deuteronomy, you see from verse 15 onwards, it's talking about curse. Why God is talking about the curse? Because the blessing is not poured out. Why is the blessing not poured out? Because... We fail to show out our action in obedience. We fail to show out our action in diligence. We fail to show out our action in faith. When we don't sow, when we don't uh, do it diligently, when we don't do it obediently, when we don't do it out of faith, what happens? The heaven, doors of heaven are closed over the seed that we are sowing. So we don't have the blessing of God. Then I showed you the fourth reason why we don't reap everything is because there's a devourer who's trying to reap your harvest before you go reap your harvest. He's trying to steal all of your benefit. He's trying to eat all of the reward that, you know, you have worked very hard. God is finding out, you know, that's why we, we got to be careful. And God says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Look at the privilege. God says, if you have sown your seed diligently, obediently, and faithfully, God is saying, for your sake, I will rebuke the devourer. And God rebukes the devourer, you are liable to reap all of your harvest. And the fifth reason I talked about last week, which is very important, which we don't give much emphasis is that we fail to discern our harvest. God says, have you sown your seed? And God says, if you have sown your seed for your life, for your work, for your family, for your future, God says, you will certainly have your harvest. But how many times do we discern our harvest? How many times do we talk about our harvest? How many times do we believe about our harvest? That's the problem with many Christians, you know. They are good in sowing, but they are not good in discerning their harvest. You got to understand that. I showed you, I was able to talk to you last week, uh, you know, when will you be in a position to discern your harvest? When you know that your harvest is ready, one indication that will, you know, glow in your life, like a bulb, you know, like a thousand watts bulb, it's that says, you will have that readiness to reap your harvest. You will not be slag. You will not be lazy. You will not say, let me see it some other time. But you will always be ready to reap your harvest. That's the indication, my friend. And the second indication, when, your harvest, when you discern your harvest, it says, there will be joy filling your heart. Never mind how your night is, but there is a morning for you. Joy comes in the morning. That's the indication, you know, there will be a great joy filling your heart. And when that joy fills your heart, you will know it's time for you to reap your harvest. That's how you can find out, that's how you can discern when your harvest is Today I want to talk something more on that, you know, because there are some more important aspect in discerning our harvest. And one aspect that I want to talk is that, you know, where is my harvest? That's a big question. 
you know. All right, it is good that I have an indication of being ready. All right, it is good that I have an indication of, you know, my heart is bubbling with joy. But where is my harvest? That's a big question every, you know, Christian will truly have if you have sown your seed. I have sown my seed. Now where is my harvest? How do I discern where is my harvest? That's why I want to talk to you this morning. Turn your Bible to me to Luke chapter 5. Let me show you how you got to discern where is your harvest that God has for your life. I'm going to read a couple of verses this morning. Uh, look with me from verse 1. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Let me read it for you. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thresh out a little from the land. And he sat down and thought the people out of the ship. And now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. This is a very familiar passage. You know, we oftentimes, we come across this illustration, but we need to ponder once, once, once again to find out the depth of finding out where our harvest is. Let me just point out this illustration, you know. Jesus was getting near a seashore, and you find people are crowding up Jesus to hear him speaking. And, you know, when uh, Jesus was able to see fishermen washing their nets. Especially Peter, you know, was washing his net. And uh, he was about to clean his net and he was packing up and he was about to go home. That's the time Jesus, you know, is speaking to Peter. He's asking Peter to lend his boat to him so that he can use that boat. And when he was asking him to lend the boat, he said to Peter, could you just move your boat a little into the water? And you find Peter was going through great disappointment in his life. He worked all night. He sowed his seed all night, but he was not able to discern where was his harvest, where was his result, where was his reward. I want you to understand this morning, my friend. You might have done something great in your life. You would have given your effort. You would have given your best. But yet, you would have not seen your best reward in your life. That's the case with Peter here and his friends. You find they would have been washing their net with great disappointment. You know, they, they are, they are uh, almost, uh, you know, embarrassed that's the time Jesus is talking to Peter and asking him for his boat, asking him to move a little bit. Peter could have easily said to Jesus his disappointment. But you know, Peter had an opportunity to sow his seed one more time. I want you to look with me this morning. That's the you know, picture I want to show you. God will always show you the opportunity for you to reap, for you to sow, and through sowing, there is an opportunity for you to reap. Here God was tr trying to show Peter, there's an opportunity for you to reap again. Yet you have toiled all night, you have sowed your seed all night, but yet I want to give you one more opportunity. 
that's the you know goodness of god god will always come again and again knocking your door knocking your heart knocking your life to show you there is an opportunity for you to reap again that's what god was showing to peter peter could have used you know he could have rejected the opportunity that god had given as given him he could have you know with valuable reason which natural reason with acceptable reason peter could have you know deliberately rejected the opportunity that jesus gave to him would you see that you know you could have said you know you would have said you know i am i am i i am so tired i am i'm i've done enough don't bother me you know i am really disappointed i'm really you know you know fed up with what with with my work he could have said all that reason which is which is acceptable which is valuable but yet what i like about peter is you know when god spoke to him he had a willingness to use an opportunity that god was giving to his life what was the opportunity god was asking his boat his ship now look at you know giving peter's boat is this opportunity for him to sow a seed giving your life giving your effort giving your willingness giving your trust giving all that you can give to god is a seed that you are sowing my friend that's the opportunity god is always looking towards your life that's very important every day god brings opportunity for our life he always shows you the opportunity where you can sow your seed look god is not going to ask you to do something new god will always ask you to use what you are using it daily in your life one of the thing that peter daily uses is his boat that's his profession today your profession might be different apart from what we see from this passage whatever is your profession whatever the task whatever the responsibility that god has given you is the opportunity god is giving you one more time to give it into the hands of god peter you know said yes you could see that you know when jesus asked him to move his boat a little he did not reject it but he was you know willing to do it he was a man who was about to leave home he was about to go home you know he was in that you know mindset but look now god is talking to and god is you know giving an opportunity he sees when god ask his boat he sees as he sees it as, as an opportunity for him to sow his seed one of the beautiful thing that i just see through this passage is that when jesus when when peter gave his boat to jesus peter gave his boat in the condition where he had no fish in his boat it was empty when peter gave his boat to jesus peter was thinking what is jesus going to do with my boat do does he know to do fishing you know only fishermen will use the boat but i don't know why this jesus is asking my boat i don't know what is he going to use it is he going to drive it is he going to you know go in and catch fish peter knew that boat is always used only for fishing but the day when jesus you know the day when peter gave his boat to jesus when he saw that seed when god gave him that opportunity so that see when he gave that boat to jesus jesus turned the boat into a preaching stage a pre- preaching pulpit that was surprising to peter peter knew that the boat can only be used for fishing first time in his life peter is thinking you know look I have never thought that my boat can turn to become a stage where Jesus could preach to the multitude. That was surprising to him. 
and he knew, he was wondering you know i just gave my boat with a fraction of moment jesus turned my boat into a different use and which is blessing so many people now peter understood one thing you know just giving my boat itself if jesus can turn my boat as a preaching stage a preaching pulpit means this man is something special that draw his attention towards jesus look at that that made him to listen to what this man is going to do that made him to you know observe jesus you know he was thinking that he's going to do something because i just gave my ordinary boat into his hand but with a with a fraction of moment you know he turned my boat into a preaching pulpit and now he's preaching people are listening to it something wonderful happening you know there are there are times in our life we don't know the value of what we have let me make that statement very strong this morning we don't know the value of what we have in our life but the god who created you knows the value of what you are having that's why jesus deliberately wanted to show the value of having boat in the life of peter god wanted to show him give it into my hand you say it is good for nothing you say you you you, you peter is thinking that i was not able to see a result with this boat with this fishing net i tried all night but i was uh, you know embarrassed i did not even you know catch a single fish a big emptiness that he 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 was going through in his life jesus showing him no 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 you can change your emptiness you can change your result you can change the outcome of your life when god used it peter is amazed many times in our life we say lord i don't have anything what can i give to you lord the god who's asking you something to sow something to you know give to him he knows that you have something that he has already given to you when god encourages you to sow don't hesitate because there is something that already god has put in your life that's why he's coming and knocking your life he's knocking your door and he's saying he's trying to show you there's an opportunity for you to sow god showed peter there's an opportunity you can use it you can reject it today many christians you know every day when god gives us an opportunity we don't value those opportunities we say this is a regular work i'm doing this is a regular thing that i'm doing imagine being a preacher if i say this is the regular thing that i'm doing every week after week i got to preach word after word again this is a regular thing am i doing imagine if i don't value it if i don't see it as see it as an opportunity that god has given me a time to sow the seed which is the word of god into the heart of people then i don't value it i don't see it as it as an opportunity now look at you know god is trying to show you much more greater things the moment he gave his boat peter is surprised to see his boat turned into a preaching pulpit now after god finishing his preaching god is now speaking to peter that's where i want you to look into your bible in verse 4 it says now when he had left speaking that means once he finished his preaching now it's time for jesus to show him much more greater reward to peter it says he said unto simon launch out into deep one thing i can f- see here is jesus had a challenging time with peter and what was a challenging time you know here is a man who's who's defeated who's embarrassed who couldn't even catch one single fish there was great emptiness in his life he was washing his net who was about to pack and who was about to leave home Jesus had a challenge made him to stay there 
you know he got jesus got into peter's boat you know asked peter to move his boat a little so that he could stand and preach to the people that's the challenging part imagine a man who wants to go home a man who's disappointed to make that man to stand there to make that man to move his boat give his boat is a big challenge and jesus made him to do that that's the first part of challenge and the second challenge that jesus had with peter is jesus want peter to move his boat little deeper now you got to understand when was jesus asking him to move his boat little deeper that's the interesting part Look at verse 4 and 5 it says he said unto Peter launch out into deep and let your nets for a draught and Simon answered said unto him master we toiled all the night you find he's trying to say you got to understand how a fisherman will work fisherman will always do fishing only in the night they don't do fishing in the morning it's it's daytime you know he, he he tried all night and in the morning peter was washing was cleaning his net and he was about to pack it and he was about to throw it inside his boat he was about to go home that's the time jesus meeting him and jesus asking him to move his boat and jesus preaching there from his boat and after finishing his preaching jesus is asking peter to move his boat to a deeper place and let down his net now jesus is saying jesus you don't know nothing about fishing because fishermen will fish do fishing only in the night they don't do it in the morning because fish knows what is happening in the daytime so fisherman will never do fishing now you are asking me to put my net in the daytime there were every valid reason for peter to neglect the opportunity to sow his seed you getting what i'm saying this morning we have all natural reasons we have all valuable reasons to neglect the opportunity that god brings into our life Peter could have used those opportunities to say to Jesus Jesus you don't know about fishing you you have done your preaching it's time for you to go home it's time for me to go home because i was waiting when will you finish your preaching because once you finish i can pull out back my boat to the seashore then i can go home you can go home this would have been our reply if we would have been there what would you say you know if you go through like this you would say jesus you are good preacher but you are not a good fisherman peter did not say that peter was traveling with jesus that's what i like about peter he was traveling with jesus he sensed his opportunity to sow a seed he did not you know he did not point out the valuable reasons to jesus and neglected the opportunity but rather he used those opportunities look at verse 5 says master we try we toiled all night he's saying we toiled all night and you're asking me to let down my net in the daytime which is impossible for a fisherman to do fishing in a daytime but what inspired peter to do that is because the moment he gave his boat to jesus he never ever thought that his boat could ever turned out to be a preaching pulpit jesus showed him when something gets into the hands of god he can change those things to great you know uh, useful things great and mighty things which you could ever you know you you could never ever fathomed which you could never ever imagine that god could even use those things which i am using it daily in my life in such a beautiful way and that made peter to listen to all that jesus was preaching there now look at what happened there he says and have it says and i have taken nothing and this is the word interesting it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net he says nevertheless lord 
at thy word i believe your word because the moment i gave my body into your hand you changed my you know thought you changed my observation you changed my attention that's what peter is saying you grabbed my attention then i was listening to you and now i know even if it is daytime even it is not right for a fisherman to do fishing in the daytime but yet after hearing what you said after you know knowing what you are capable of doing to the thing that i have given into your hand he says nevertheless i will let go my net by thy word and god is seeing you know i asked your boat you gave to me and now god says it is time for me to pay you back do you know that every time when you use the opportunity and you sow your seed in the place where god ask you to sow your seed you must know that anything that god ask you anything that you give to god you got to know that god will never say thank you my boy thank you thank you i appreciate you you go back that's not what god is going to say if you have given according to what god has instructed you you got to know there is a time in your life where god will pay it back in abundance there is a payback time do you believe that there is a payback time for your life my friend our payback time is you know we say you spoke few words i will give you thousand words which will you know be like a arrow piercing your heart that's what we know we we know to give back pay back in revenge but god is saying you know when you give something according to what god has instructed you god is saying now you have given me trusting me you have done it diligently you have done it obediently and you have done it by believing my word so god says it's time for me to pay you back do you know peter had a payback time why just because he gave his boat to jesus just because he took that opportunity to sow his seed my friend you see that picture every time when you use the opportunity to sow the seed where god wants you to sow it where god wants you to give it what happens you don't forget there is a time god wants to pay you back and look at the payback time it says in verse 5 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes look at that great multitude of fishes and their net break that's the payback time my friend when god pays you back your empty boat will be filled with fishes your empty life you have not seen reward you have not seen the result for your hard work but god says my payback time is coming and when my payback time comes to you your boat will be filled not only your boat is filling up your net will break so much of you know fish you will catch this is what god is saying how do you take it how do you believe it how do you travel with god how do you use the opportunity that god is showing you every day one of the thing that i see in peter's life is you know when he was washing his net when he was about to pack and go home there was you know there was a great hopelessness in his life there was great hopelessness he had hopeless situation now how is a man who was going through hopelessness was daring to act in faith it's because when he saw jesus turning his boat to a preaching pulpit now when he saw that his boat is filled with fish when he saw that his net is breaking with so much of fish you know that he was able to catch here is a man who's dare is daring to act in faith who are we this morning do we have that boldness 
to do our work diligently to work uh, obeying to what god is saying to us and to you know sow our seed faithfully trusting god then i say this morning you know if your life boat is empty this morning you have a god who can fill your life boat you have a god who will you know make your eyes to see the wonders of god <clears throat> wonders of god that's what god did now how did this happen to peter that's a big question why was peter able to receive this kind of result and reward in his life you know why because peter was a man who was able to discern where was his harvest why was he was able to see that his boat was filling with fish fish and he was able to see that his net was breaking how was it possible to see those abundant of god's blessing in his whole lifetime the reason is because he was a man who was able to discern where god had his harvest my friend you want to have that kind of good catch of fishes good catch of reward good catch of blessing good catch of you know success victory in your life then it is more important for you to find out where god has placed harvest for your life god showed peter move your boat to a deeper place <clears throat> now let down your net now throw your net for a catch jesus saying that's the place where your harvest is there many could have said to peter peter let us go home don't listen to this man he will just keep saying like this his work is to preach our work is to do fishing come on let's go we got to go sleep we got to come in the night to do fish again because we already missed out one night without uh, even having a single fish uh, you know so let's not waste any more time let us go home there were many you know around peter could have said to him let us move let's not listen to him let's not move up boat um, let's not move your boat deeper place into a deeper place peter rejected all of those things because he saw something that god could do in his life he started to believe god that god will do something in my life my friend i want you to believe that this morning god is still working for you do you believe that god is still working for you you might see so much of impossibility you might have seen so much of you know obstacles and so much of you know troubles in your life but still i want you to know that god is still working for you don't lose hope if your hopeless is is great in your life let the words that god is speaking to you this morning help you to understand help you to discern where your heart was listen to what god speaks to you because god will always wants to show you there are plenty of opportunity that god brings to your life there are plenty of opportunity that god brings to your life don't be disappointed don't just give up you will have so many people saying it's enough what you have done no 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 jesus will come again and again and he will show you the opportunity to sow your seed that's what happened in peter's life when he discerned where his harvest is he started to reap his harvest why we are not reaping our harvest because we don't know where that harvest that god has for our life peter could have rejected it peter could have refused those opportunity but what i liked about peter is peter he was traveling with jesus he was listening to jesus i tell you my friend this morning as you keep coming here as you keep hearing the word of god you are traveling with him you are journeying together you are cooperating with god and you will definitely see 
God will fill your boat. God will show you where your harvest is. Don't, don't just say, Lord, I don't know what to do. God will continually speak to you. God will continually instruct you. God will show you the way, show you the direction, show you the place. God will say, this is the place I want you to let down your net. Come on, let down your net. And when you do it, you will be fathomed to see the miracle and the wonders that God has planned for your life. This is how God is going to bring success, prosperity, wellness, peace, joy into your family, into your work, into everything that you put forth your hand. Devil doesn't want us to discern where God has the harvest for us. What will he say? Don't so. Don't, don't. He will always discourage you. There are so many things around us which can easily discourage us, uh, us my friend. Devil will discourage me and say, why are you preaching, you know? It's good for nothing, you know? What's the use of preaching? No result. They will always say that, you know. Because he knows that God has given me something which he can use through my life. Devil doesn't want me to use that opportunity. Devil doesn't want me to use it. Because when I start using it, I will, I will see the guidance of God. I will hear the voice of God. I will, you know, obey to the instruction of God. And when I do that, my boat will start to be, you know, filling up. God will start to fill up my boat. All my emptiness will slowly move out. All my needs will be met. All my expectation will be fulfilled. And you will see that God, step by step, He will bring in that harvest and you will reap all of your harvest in a very successful way. Let me show you one more illustration this morning to find out where is your harvest. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 26. These are very important illustration for you to understand where God has the harvest for your life which will help you to discern with God's wisdom, with God's guidance. Genesis chapter 26, let me read a few words from the beginning. It says, and there was a famine in land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. That means there was famine in the time of Abraham. And in that famine, Abraham did not die. But in that famine, Abraham became rich. Do you know that in every famine that we go through, if you use the opportunity that God has given you, you can prosper, you can flourish, you can become rich. In your soul, in your spirit and in your body, you can become rich, my friend. It's an evident here. The Bible says, if you read Genesis 12, 13 and 14, you will see that how God flourished Abraham through famine. That's what it says. You know, it says, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of Palestine, unto Gera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, and unto thee and to thy seed. I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and my commandments, my status and my laws. Now look at here. Here's another challenge that comes to Isaac. What is the challenge? He has a challenge that either he could stay in the place where God is asking him to stay or he could start running with people who are running to Egypt. That's very important. Today we talk about uh, today's trend, right? You heard that word trend, T-R-E-N-D. 
trending is a very fascinated word that's attracting many people you see many people say you got to go along with the world's trend have you heard people saying that you got to go along with the world's trend if you don't go along with the world's trend then you will be left out now there is a world trend going on in that particular chapter that world trend is people are going to egypt do you know why people going to egypt because egypt was a well flourished and well prosperous land and egypt was a well organized country in those days they were well organized in things they were well organized in doing things you know saving and uh, you know the country was a well organized country therefore if there is a famine in any town city village uh, people from those place the first thing that they do is they will immediately move or run towards egypt because they know if we go to egypt we will have everything for our life people are running when people were running god is saying you don't run god will say i want you to stand out have you seen people you know when somebody running you know when some few people start to run when somebody is watching you know when they are standing along with the people who are running they will also start to run together finally when you stop and ask why are you running they will say they are running i am also running we go along with the trend god is saying i don't want you to run along with the people who are running not knowing the opportunity not knowing what god can do god is saying i want you to stay in the place where i have i have i have kept you stay it's a hard thing my friend because the place where god is asking isaac to say is filled with famine filled with poverty there's no water there is no 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 way where isaac could see an opportunity to you know sow a seed which will bring a, you know crop for him to reap his harvest there's no opportunity because there's no water the land is dry but god is telling him i want you to say look at verse 2 verse 2 it says and lord appeared and to him and god said go not down look at that word go not down into egypt i don't know what god is saying to you this morning but this is what god is speaking to you do not go anywhere else stay in the place where god has put you god has given you a family god has given you a job god has given you a society god has given you a church and god is saying stay where you are don't go anywhere don't just uh, you know start to run here and there if you read that whole chapter you see everywhere isaac digged well there was water but the people who were running from that land when they dig that well they couldn't find water but when isaac you know when he put forth his hand and when he dig the well god is you know producing water out of that well that's a blessing and if you see in verse 12 it says and isaac sowed in that land that's the interesting part he did not sow his seed running along with people in the land of egypt and he did not sow his seed there but he sowed his seed in gera today we have so many you know channels news channels we have so many newspapers india today hindu you know so many things if you could name something there in that place i would say there was a gera times gera today in that gera today in that gera headlines there will be a you know flash news mentioned about isaac saying that everybody were running because they suffered and because they did not had anything they did not you know were able to live their life there so people moved out from gera to egypt but here as a man who stayed in gera sowed his seed and he was prosperous that would be, that would have become a big headlines My friend when I when, when you stay in the place when you do what God ask you to do 
then you will become a big headlines to the world, to the society, to your family, to your workplace. You will be a, you know, a witness that God will show out to people around you. Show out you as an example to the whole society, to the whole community around you that how God can bless a man when he obeys, when he does his work diligently, when he uses faith in trusting God to sow a seed in the place where God asks him to stay and do what God wants him to do. That's a challenging thing for us. We tend to see the crisis. We tend to you know, see the cast says the, the, the lack that we go through. But God says, don't worry about the lack. Don't worry about uh, the economy that is around you. Don't worry about the dryness that is around you. But you stay there. I am a God who can flourish you no matter where you are. If God is with you, it doesn't matter what your condition is. It doesn't matter what your situation is. If God is with you and if you do what God asks you to do, if you sow in the place where God asks you to sow, I tell you, my friend, that's the place God will flourish you. How many of you say amen to that? That's the place God will flourish you. But many times when God wants to bring that flourishment into your life, we move from that place. You're getting what I'm saying this morning? We got to stay there, you know. God doesn't want you to run here and there. God wants you to stay. And you know, that's the blessing God is, you know, going to show you. And it says, he stayed in that land and received in that same year. That's the interesting thing, you know. Not, out, not after 10 years or not after 100 years. Look at it, it is mentioned there. He stayed in that same land. And in that same year, it says, he reaped a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Do you want to reap hundredfold in this year? I say, God says, you stay where you are. Do what I say. Use the opportunity that I give to you every day. See every opportunity that God brings to your life as a time to sow your seed. And when you do it, God says, God will bless you. In the same place where you say, where you go through dryness, where you go through defeat, where you go through emptiness, God can fill those emptiness. God can change that emptiness. God can, you know, bring flourishment in your dryness. He can, he can, he can produce fruits into all your hard work and he will reward you, my friend. That will happen. You know, look at the next verse. That's most interesting. It says, and the man waxed great. Do you want to become great? You cannot become great when you go somewhere else. You will only become great when you stay where God asks you to stay and sow the seed where God asks you to sow your seed. And when you see that opportunity that God brings into your life, it's a seed that God wants you to sow and that seed is going to, you know, make you great. Because you have diligence, you have obedience and you have faith in that seed. And it says that man waxed great and went forward. Look at those words, he became great, he moved forward and grew until he became very great. Oh my goodness. That should be the blessing of every Christian, my friend. You got to keep moving until you become very great. Look at that. Not running here and there, but you keep moving in sowing your seed in the place where God asks you to stay, in the place where God wants you to do your work. You keep doing it. God says you will move forward until you become very great. What a great blessing. Some of, some of you might think, you know, I did not have an, even a little drop of blessing and you are talking about great, becoming great. No, no, no. God is saying, see every opportunity that God brings into your life, a time where God is giving you to sow your seed. And when you sow your seed, 
diligently, obediently, faithfully, God is saying, I am there to bless it. And when God bless it, He will guide you. He will direct you. He will show you where your harvest is. Look at, you know, God showed Isaac where was his harvest. He did not show, God did not say your harvest is in Egypt. God said your harvest is in Gera. You stay here. My friend, God will show you. How many of you believe God will show you? Every day, the word of God says, He will keep His eye upon you and He will instruct you, He will guide you in the way that you got to walk. That's what God did to Isaac. He said, you got to stay here. This is the place where I want you to be blessed and this is the place I want you to become very great. Grew very great. He, he became very great. Every week God tells me that. And that's why I keep preaching the word of God. And that's what God wants to do in your life, my friend. And when you stick on to the place and do what God asks you to do, I challenge you this morning, you will become very great. You will keep moving forward. You will not have a, you know, idea of, you know, moving along with the trend. No, no, no. Trend is not important. Following God is important. Obeying to God is important. Working things in your life diligently according to God's law is important. Increasing according to God's method is important. Therefore, I am not following the trend, but I am following God's guidance and I want to do the will of God in my life to see that God blesses me in the land where I am, in the place where I am, in the responsibility where I am and I will become great and I will become very great until I grew and become very great. God will keep giving me the opportunity to sow my seed which will bring great blessing. Next week, I'm going to show you how much you can reap your harvest. That's the most important thing. You've got to discern how much you can reap your harvest. I showed you when you can reap your harvest. Today, I showed you where is your harvest. God will tell you, just like God showed Peter where his, his harvest is. Just like God showed Isaac where was his harvest. Let me tell you, my friend, God will tell you where is your harvest for your life. And when you sow your seed, in those places where God wants to bring your harvest hundredfold, that's the place God will bless you. That's the place where God will help you to grow and become great and great. And you will grow to the point that you become very great. That's our prayer. That's the, you know, desire that I have in my heart for this church and for each one of you. And I believe that's what God is going to do to me, to my family and to this church and to you, to your family and to your personal life. For that God is showing you this morning, you got to discern where your heart was discerned. Shall we stand to our feet this morning and let us pray. Don't neglect the opportunity that God gives to you. The opportunity doesn't look very unique or it doesn't look very special. The opportunity is something that you are doing it every day in your life. It might be a casual thing a casual work that you do, a casual conversation. But I want you to believe that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity for you to sow your seed. Shall we lift our voice and give thanks this morning to God?